in here. Don't get too cozy. We were talking about that this morning in Sunday school. Don't get too comfortable, right? If you get too comfortable, you might stay where you're sitting and you won't get up and pray for somebody or go over and do something the Lord's asking you to do. You're too cozy where you're at. I ought to make everybody get up and just move right now. Just kidding. I, I couldn't do that because I have to sit there because, you know, my brain, I'm like, if I don't sit there, then the Holy Spirit doesn't come. And, you know, it's like your brain, it's a trigger. We're humans, right? We like repetitive, same old, same old. So familiar, yes, yes, yes. Familiar is the word. All right, so let's get started. Let's go to the Lord this morning. Let's go to the Lord. Father, we come before you today, Lord, just so grateful, so thankful to be in the house of God. So, so thankful that um, there weren't soldiers standing at the door. You know, we didn't have to crawl in through the basement. We came in proud with our head held high, um, knowing that you are our Redeemer. You are our Savior. You, you came to save the world, and that includes us, and we're so grateful, and, and we'll walk in boldly to profess that, Father. I just thank you, Lord, that as... Um, as time draws near, Father, that you would um, allow, allow us to be your bold servants, Lord, to carry your word um, to the utmost, Father. But that starts here. Lord, just help us not to get comfortable. I just pray, Father, that we would, uh, if we see someone uh, getting comfortable, that we would say, wake up. Wake up for the Lord. Move, move your body. Stand up. Do something. Do something different. I just thank you for it, Lord. I thank you, Father, that your word will come today. Uh, powerful father that our soul is prepared and ready there is nothing wrong with the seed the seed is not the problem father i just thank you lord that our soul soul is prepared and we're ready to receive your word uh, to worship you father because you are worthy to be praised we thank you for it in jesus name amen, amen. all right first off we want to welcome any visitors in the house today anybody that's with us this morning that has never attended here at emmanuel i'd like to see a hand no hands okay I do see several that have been with us for a couple weeks now. We're, we're really thankful that you've continued to come worship with us. Uh, we, we love to see you. Hope you continue to come. Uh, we also want to welcome uh, those that have joined us on Facebook this morning. I know sometimes that's super handy. If maybe you aren't feeling well and you still want to get the word, you can stay home, still get the same message. To, to me, it's not the same because I like to be in the room up in here, but... Um, it is still a great, great source to still get the word. Um, our sanctuary is open for prayer each Sunday morning from 9 to 925. That's prior to Sunday school, which starts at 930. There is a class for you. There's a class for all ages. Um, we have a class upstairs. We have the next age classes in the fellowship hall. Down from there, we have several classrooms downstairs for your children. Please make that a priority. Maybe you haven't done that in 2023. Go ahead and set your mind, set your Set your mind on 2024 that you're going to you're gonna try to do that. Not just to benefit you, to benefit your children, right? As parents, I know we go to sleep every night. What can I do? What can I do to be a better parent? I hope you're all thinking that anyway. I'm, I'm a little extra, so I do it way too much. But number one, take your kids to Sunday school. It's so simple. You bring them, someone else teaches them, and you get to go in a class. And our class has breakfast, so you get to enjoy that. But, yeah, it's, it was really good this morning, bacon and potatoes, and it was very good. But... Um, come, please come and try to make that a priority. It's, it's, you will not be, you will not be mad that you did that. Uh, okay, so our first big announcement is our Operation Christmas Child Packing Party is this Wednesday. I know we've been announcing that. Been, she's been, uh, we put together some little bags last week downstairs, um, but she does need some help today to get prepared for Wednesday. So we need, um, not necessarily just men, but we need anybody who can right after church to go downstairs. We've got several shoe boxes that need to be moved from one room into another room. So it's just little shoe boxes. You don't have to, it's not a lot to lift, but she does have several. So more hands, less work. So try to just jump down there, see if you can move five or six before you walk out. Okie doke. So we're moving all the stuff, not just shoe boxes. We're moving boxes of, uh, I guess, like shoes, soccer balls, deflated soccer balls, like that kind of thing. Okay, she, and she said she will be down there, so if you aren't sure, just ask her, okay? But please, uh, we need probably 10 to come down there and just help us move all that stuff. Everybody, I mean, let's just stop what we're doing right now. I'm just kidding. <laughs> we will make sure that gets done for you, okay? Um, she has been so good to get all this stuff together. 
for this Christmas shoebox. Um, you know, we go down and we're going to pack the shoeboxes and that's a big deal, but there is a lot of stuff in that room and it did not get in there on its own. I know we have some people on Wednesday nights carting it through the hallway before church starts, but it's, it's been a lot and I'm super grateful. She took that project and she's ran with it and she's a blessing and that's such a blessing to so many people. I, I love to pack the shoe boxes. It's one of my favorite things to do. So if you can be here Wednesday night at 630, uh, we'll start packing those and we pack until they're, do- they're done. So come on out. Um, okay, the follow-up gathering for the Emmaus Walks will be November the 11th. Uh, that's Saturday night at five o'clock here. The board meeting will be at four o'clock prior to that gathering. Um, they have a, it's potluck, so if you're coming to the gathering to eat at five, please bring a dish with you. Um, if you've been on the walk, please come help us represent IMC. So if you have been on Emmaus Walk, please write down that date, November 11th at five o'clock to be here um, to represent, to represent our church and our voice, okay? Uh, we are still collecting donations for the Bridge Kentucky Homeless Shelter. They need undergarments, warm clothing, shoes, hygiene supplies, disinfecting cleaner, trash bags, food service supplies, and utensils. Any of that stuff that you can gather and bring here, uh, they'll, they'll make it. They'll, they'll take it on for you. Uh, the Mighty Warriors. Sure. You're over here. Yeah. Uh, we were hoping to do a really quick practice today between the end of service and before baptisms while everybody's getting ready. So if you kiddos want to practice for the Mighty Warriors and for the Christmas, we're going to start practicing Christmas songs too. Please meet in the nursery as quickly as you can get there because we don't want to miss our baptisms. Thank you. Okay. So when you see Cheryl stand and kind of wave, send your children on over and she'll take them in there and get that, get that going. Okay. The Mighty Warriors mute, uh, singing practice there. Uh, the November activity calendars are ready in the foyer, and uh, that's all we have. We do have a baptism service for you today. Had several that have come to be baptized, and it's exciting. We're grateful for that. Let's stand up and get our blood flowing. You got something? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just want to say something real quick. Um, on behalf of my wonderful wife, Amy, and I, thank you so much for all the love, the care, the gifts of appreciation for pastor's appreciation last week thank you so much that means the world to us we get to sit back in the, at, the, at the house and read all the cards and everything and they were so delightful so many great words of encouragement and so many words of just love toward us and this church and we appreciate it very much i just wanted to say thank you for that i'm Amen. grateful for it Amen. yeah we, we had pastor appreciation sunday and then hallelujah night we, we announced for you know a month was tuesday night and it It was wonderful, and I can't explain to you how it could have not been at all. And our pastor's wife stepped in and literally took over on Pastor Appreciation Day right after right after we ate downstairs and got all of that put together for us to have Hallelujah Night Tuesday because some the one who was supposed to do it she had so many things going on her had a lot of family issues she couldn't step into that role and she stepped in as she has done her whole (laughs) time in that seat and. And it came together, and it was so fun, and it was perfect, and had several people come over, what can we do to help, and same one we cleaned up Tuesday night, everybody just pitched in and helped, some people didn't even, don't even attend here, and they were carrying stuff and sweeping things, and and to me, that is so beautiful, that is service, and that's what we're here to do, is to serve, and it was wonderful, it was a really great time, so between Sunday and Tuesday, I feel like our church really had a great, a great week, so Let's stand up and and give the Lord some praise this morning. Let's look at our neighbor and say, wake up. Okay? I tell him, wake up. Wake up. Amen. Wake up out there, folks. Jesus said, come follow him. Take up your cross and follow me. Let your light shine. Amen. You are salt and you are light. Amen. It's time to wake up, right? Psalm 100 says this, Lift up a great shout of joy. Excuse me, this is the Passion Translation. Lift up a great shout of joy to Yahweh. Go ahead and do it. Everyone, everywhere. Worship Yahweh with gladness. Sing your way into His presence with joy and realize what this really means. We have the privilege of worshiping Yahweh our God. 
Wonderful. For he is our creator and we belong to him. We are the people of his pleasure. You can pass through his open gates with the password of praise. Come right into his presence with thanksgiving. Come bring your thank offering to him and affectionately bless his beautiful name. For Yahweh is always good and ready to receive you. He's so loving that it will amaze you, so kind that it will astound you, and he is famous for his faithfulness toward all. Everyone knows our God can be trusted, for he keeps his promises to every generation. Wow, aren't you thankful? We serve a good God, don't we? Amen, anybody agree? And we serve a living God, aren't you thankful? Amen, aren't you thankful? This first song just simply says, Who is like the Lord? Do you know anybody like Him? Amen. Do you know the Lord? Amen. that gentleman that one pastor says do you know him do you know him amen the bible says this if you draw near unto the lord he will what draw nigh unto thee so who's got to make the first move amen us we do a lot of his promises are conditional if you do this then he'll do his part amen if you call upon the name of the lord what then you will be saved amen so it's up to us it's our responsibility to call upon the name of the lord it's us that makes the first move amen who you say i am he's not going to force himself on us right he's a uh, he's a gentleman right he is a gentleman but aren't you thankful just like the prodigal son when we turn says he saw him a long way off he's waiting for you he's waiting for you he's looking for you amen
you thankful? Amen. The Bible says, What great love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called, what? Children of God. Amen. Isn't he good? You were translated, you were brought out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. What great love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. He is a good God. He's a loving God. He is powerful. Amen. He is strong. Jesus says, all authority in heaven and earth has been given unto me. Amen. That one line, it says, uh, who the Son sets free is what? Free indeed. Free indeed. Amen. Aren't you thankful? Does that sound like a weak God to you? Sounds like a powerful God. Sounds like a God who has all power and all authority <laughs> given unto him. Aren't you thankful? He did say, go therefore. We've got some responsibility in this. Amen.
aren't you thankful that he is faithful? We just read in Psalms 100 how he is faithful to every generation. Aren't you thankful for that? Amen. Amen. We do have a part to play. Again, Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. It's your Father's will that we bear much fruit. In order to bear fruit, we have to what? Stay what? Attached. We have to stay attached to the vine, right? In order to bear much fruit. He did say, apart from me, you can do nothing. So whose responsibility is it to stay attached to the vine? Amen. It's our responsibility. That's okay to say that. We're big boys and girls, aren't we? It's our responsibility to stay attached to the vine. Amen. Amen. But aren't you thankful for his faithfulness? Aren't you thankful?
Lord, I give you my heart. Sing it again, Ethan. Lord, I give you my heart. And this is my desire. Hallelujah. name of the Lord will be saved. Amen. Have you trusted the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior? Say, so, well, how do I do that? Well, you believe he is the Son of God. You believe that he bore your sins and your iniquities on his own body on the cross. You trust him. You trust him. You trust his blood. You trust him to be your sacrifice for sin. You ask him to come into your heart. How hard is that? You ask him to come into your spirit, your heart. I'm not talking about your blood pumper. I'm talking about your spirit. You are spirit. You have a soul. You live in a physical body. Being born again is the recreation of your spirit into the spirit realm of God. When we sin, we fail from God. We were disconnected. You ever lost a call? You've been disconnected. You're talking to somebody, and all of a sudden you realize there ain't nobody there. There's a disconnect. We've all been disconnected from God. It's not just like a, a phone, but it's, it's a disconnect. How are you going to get reconnected? You're going to ask Father to forgive you, ask him to come and reestablish that communication that you had with him before. If you've never trusted him, trust Jesus. Trust him. Some people believe you got a bald squall for a day or two. So you got to go to the mourner's bench and mourn for a while. Well, I mean, that's what you got to do to get in and go for it. But no place in the scripture that asks you to do that. I think you should be sorry for your sin. Sure. Repent. Amen. You're sorry that you've sinned against God. The Spirit of God corrects you. Repentance comes. You're sorry. And you ask him to forgive you. How long does it take God to forgive you? Nobody knows. It's the speed of the light, isn't it? He does it pretty quick. If you truly ask him, you truly believe, he's supernatural. There's a supernatural transformation that takes place in the spirit realm. And then little by little, that transformation comes to the outward man. So don't, don't, don't fail to be saved. Amen. I mean, that's the, whole, that's the whole deal, isn't it? Amen. Do you have that this morning you want to honor the Lord with financially? We appreciate you coming to Emmanuel Ministry Church. I know you made the decision. Nobody except the little bitty maybe got you by the ear or the short hair and brought you. But you came of your own accord, and you give as the Lord leads you and guides you. Amen. Every praise is to our God. Amen. Every praise to our God, every word of worship, but one of God, every praise, every praise to our God. Hallelujah. 
shout of praise this morning. Woo! Hallelujah. Woo! We're trying to teach the people at the nursing home to shout. So we're singing old hymnal songs, but when we get done with a verse, we'll say, Woo! <laughs> They're, it's amazing how, how uh, lethargic they are, but when they get to shouting a little bit, they come, and my eyes come up, and they, they begin to expect it, you know. If you've never been to a nursing home to minister to those people, you ought to come with us some Wednesday morning and sing those blue hymnal songs and watch them just get into it. They really do get into it. Praise the Lord. Come ahead. God is so good, isn't he? So good. Amen. Hallelujah. And all the time, God is good. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Lord, we thank you so much for this tithe and offering, Lord. Uh, Lord, we thank you that you are going to bless the hands of the givers, Lord. I pray a, a special blessing over Pastor Miss Linda today, Lord. Uh, Lord, we thank you that Pastor is going to deliver a, just a message from you, Lord. Thank you for that. Mm. We thank you for this beautiful weather, Lord. Yes. And thank you for safety and protection and just for a wonderful service. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, you may be seated. Praise the Lord. Thank you for your attendance today. And I want to echo what Les said earlier. Thank you for every expression of love that you showed to us. We enjoy the cards. We enjoy all of it. And we're going to enjoy the gift cards as we go and feast. There's a lot of feast prepared for us, isn't there? So we thank you for that. We're very blessed. And what, boy, what a meal that was last week. Wasn't that something? Woo! That's good. IGA, do, they do chicken right. <laughs> Amen. Well, as you know, this Tuesday is uh, election day. So I want to encourage you to get out and, uh, and voice your opinion, voice your vote, not more than opinion, your belief, and make sure that you vote your best way to vote the Bible as you believe, those that most clearly represent you in their, in their life and in the way that they do things, vote the Bible. Amen. Amen. So, you know, it's more than just a political thing. It's, it's a biblical thing. And people are, are, have died over the years to give us the right to be able to voice what we believe. And that's a great honor to do that. And as you go on Tuesday to vote, you're honoring the people throughout time that have fought for your freedom and liberty uh, to have that right. Amen? And so that's, that's a great privilege, I think, to go, to go vote. And uh, so I encourage you to do that, very much so. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I know I've been out in and out of the pulpit here lately, a lot of different things going on. Didn't, uh, didn't Brother Todd do a masterful job last week? Whew! If you hadn't got a copy of that uh, from last week, I encourage you to write uh, your name down out there where you can get a copy of that and uh, take a few days, take a week's vacation and go through that. Because <laughs> there was a week worth of stuff in there, man. I mean, he was preaching beside himself, and that's... Uh, I praise the Lord for that. Uh, I was uh, ministering to you about angels last time I was here. Uh, matter of fact, uh, Phil and I did three, uh, four messages Friday, and three out of the four was on angels. So it seems like a subject matter that the Lord has put in my spirit, and uh, there's a lot more to it. When I started uh, studying it and really researching it, uh, there's a tremendous uh, volume of things that angels do for us that we're unaware of. Angels unaware. I read a story uh, just this morning uh, of a minister up in New Jersey that he was on his way doing ministry and uh, somebody done the wrong thing and he swerved to keep from uh, hitting them in the side or whatever and hit a telephone pole or light pole and the transformer come right down on his car, hot, and energized that car. And, uh, and matter of fact, it, it, was, it set it on fire. And uh, he couldn't get his seat belt out. He couldn't get his door open. And it looked like all hope was gone. But all of a sudden, there was an individual that got to, jerked the door open and, and pulled his seat belt off of him and carried him to safety. 
and neither them or the first responders could find that person. Now, I'm not going to tell you that happens every time because it don't. But sometimes we entertain angels unaware. Have you ever had things to happen in your life and you look back and say, how in the world? How did I get by that time? It's like the picture of the turtle up on the fence post. You know he didn't get there by himself. Right? We've all had angels to help us get someplace and do something that we couldn't have done by ourselves. We know the Holy Ghost is here to help us. I believe myself the Holy Ghost is on us and in us to empower us to do certain things. But I believe there's things externally out from that that God does use angelic beings to help us. The Bible says they're ministering spirits sent to minister for us who are heirs of salvation. And you'll find that in Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 14. If you want to see it in your own Bible, open up your Bible to the book of Hebrews. And there in verse 14, it says, Are they not all ministering spirits? What's he talking about? Talking about angels. The angels are ministering spirits. What do they do? They're sent to minister for those who have been saved. Salvation. They're our workers. How do we dispatch angels and ministering spirits? Well, that's a good question, isn't it? That's a very good question. Isn't it? I think the first thing, you need to believe in them. You need to believe that God has a host of angelic beings to assist you in your life. Thank God for salvation that comes through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Thank God we've been washed in the blood, born again. The Holy Spirit immersed us into the body of Christ. We're all one body by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. And we all can be filled with the Spirit. And what does that mean? The Holy Spirit comes on us, comes up on us for service. You know, we should be, after we're born again, we should be wanting to assist somebody else. It's not about all about me. If it's all about you, you're missing 99% of what Christianity is about. It's about service. I come into uh, to know a, a group this week, and their, their organiza organization is named Service. No, just serve. Just serve. That's it. Just serve. Oh, man, I love that already. And it's basically out of the Church of Latter-day Saints of Jesus Christ. It's, it's, a, it's unbelievable what that organization is doing to assist humanity. They have farms out in Utah and all out in that country, and they take three people that's lives have been in shambles and try to bring them back to life and give them jobs, and they raise food and all kind of products. They do all kind of stuff and just give it to organizations to give to needy people. Look down there in the gymnasium, I got probably two pallets of stuff leaned up against the wall, good food that came from that organization. They just call me and say, we see, and they've been helping us at the food bank. That those new people at the food bank, that's where they come from. And they want to assist. And they assured me there's unlimited amount of stuff to, to help people with. That sounds like our God, don't it? I'm telling you. Do, do, do they ask me to read their books and to quit drinking tea? No, they didn't say a thing in the world about that. Here's what they said. I said this. He said, does that concern you that the, the, there's, there's a name on that food and stuff that's produced where it's produced at? I said, no, no more than, you know, Campbell's or, you know, whoever. I said, here's my belief. If you're born again, you're in the family of God. You're my brother and sister, brother or sister, if you're born again, if you're washed in the blood. I don't particularly care what signs over the door. What's in your spirit is the main thing that counts. Is that not right? 
So praise God. I said, you're my brother. And, you're, and they agreed with that 100%. So glory to God. You know, they love what we're doing because they're all about just serve. I want you to know the best way you can increase your Christianity is quit thinking about yourself and just serve somebody else. You may be that, in a sense, angel that God uses to assist somebody else. And I don't know if that's just the way it happens, but I've seen people that seem like to me that they were just angelic almost. But I believe there are real, true angels that God uses to help somebody. Now, he ain't having you. He, it ain't happening like this. You're sitting watching the football game. They're out, they out cleaning out the garden. That ain't happening. Brad, <laughs> call on the angels, brother. <laughs> no, no, that ain't the way it happens. Amen. But I tell you what, if you, if you need assistance. Now, Linda, for years, we've been married for a long time. And it's not all that long for a while. Uh, but she's always, always, if something's missed, she'll say, ask the angels to show where it's at. Ask the angels to put it somewhere to where you see it. And I've told y'all about cleaning up my garden. All my garden's about four foot wide and 24 foot long right down beside the garage. And it, of course, in the late in the season, weeds and stuff comes up and all the vines from the tomatoes and different things. Well, I'm in there cleaning that all out. And I'm going from the garage is on my right all the way up through up there, cleaning it up, putting it in the trash can. Now they don't want you to put it in the trash can. Can't put trash in the trash can no more. You got to put it in a bag and then put it in the trash can. No. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, how would I get up on that right there? But anyway, that's what I was doing at that time. And I'd be putting it in there, putting it in there, putting it in there. Arm loads, just getting out a fork and had a hoe and a just a whole bunch of stuff. And I got through, went to wash my hands and realized my ring was gone. Well, what in the world? I mean, there's a whole trash can full of, it could be anywhere in there. So I'm thinking about it a few minutes, and I said, you know. So I tell Linda, I've lost my ring. She said, well, let's agree and ask the angels to put it where we can see it. I said, that's a lot easier to do through that trash can. <laughs> True story. <laughs> so a couple of days later, I just happened to go by there just looking you know, maybe they, they popped it up on top of the ground. You know where that ring right there was sitting? Now I worked going this way, and I wore my ring on this hand. That ring was on a brick leaned up against the garage. <laughs> That's the truth. What's that singer, Char Charles, that blind singer? Ray Charles could have seen it. <laughs> I mean, that's the truth. That's a true story. I said, well, look, he there picked up my ring. Isn't God good? Now, you know, don't be silly with stuff, but isn't God good? There are angels that sent to assist us in life. I believe that with all my heart. Turn to our, one of our favorite chapters here, most people, is Psalms 91. Let's go back to Psalms 91 and take a look at that. Put that up there, Brother Dale. Psalms 91, 11 and 12. Psalms 91, 11 and 12. For he, who's the he there? Now, I don't know nothing about, I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer, but I don't know why they didn't capitalize when they know it's God or Jesus one. It ought to have been capitalized. He there is God. He shall give his, should be capital letters, Angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. God said that. I believe Jesus used that scripture. I believe he did. When in the, in the time of, of temptation, I believe Jesus used that scripture. But here's, here it is that God, he, he has these angels for us to assist us in life. And we need to understand that and expect them to do things. Now look in Psalms uh, 34. I said earlier how 
How do you put your angels to work? This is one of the ways that I believe you put your angels to work. It's found right here in Psalms 34, verse uh, uh, 3 O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and he delivered me from all of my fears. They looked upon him and, and were radiant, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of his trouble. The angels of the Lord encamp round about those who fear him. And I, I'm not talking about a terror. I'm talking about reverence. Those that reverence God. Now, you know, I'm, I don't mean to be nitpicky, but have you ever noticed the level of lack of reverence? Used to be, and you come through that door right there, there are certain things everybody done, certain things nobody did. We reverenced this as the house of God. Well, we know you and I are the real house of God. We understand that. But we've asked God to come and dwell in our midst Corporately, we come here. Shouldn't we reverence him? Shouldn't we reverence him? I'm telling you right now, this is one of the keys to assistance by angels. You reverence God. You take what God says about things and about your life and what to do and not to do, and you reverence his sayings. Jesus put it this way, if you love me, keep my commands. That's another way of saying it. If we love God, we'll reverence what he says. We'll, we'll, we'll show respect to what he says. If there's things that does not please him, then I won't do those things. Out of respect. Ain't that right? It, respect used, and I use that word, and I hate to do that, but respect used to be a lot bigger value than it is today. When you find young men and young women that, that respect their elders, they're a treasure in the eyes of those people. Hmm? No doubt about that. Those are things we need to teach our children. I need a better amen than that. We need to teach our children to show respect First off, we show respect to authorities. We may not agree with everything they do, but we respect the office of authority. Amen? I understand today it's popular to just slam the president. Just slam him, slam him, slam him, slam him, slam him. I assure you there's no way you're praying effective for him and slamming him at the same time. Don't get mad at me. You can't slam him and pray effective for him. So no wonder when the trouble we're in. There's no respect. Maybe he's lost all respect. I understand that. He's not my favorite person on earth. I understand that. But he's our president. And I ask God to give him wisdom. Wisdom beyond him. And we need angelic protection over this nation. How do you reckon God's going to keep us from being slaughtered with all that's fixing to go on in the future? You reckon God might use angels? Absolutely. Might. Just might. Let's go through them again. Of course, God, the Father, the Son, Everything was made by the Son, for the Son, through the Son, and all things consist because of Jesus Christ. You get down below that, and you got three archangels. One of them rebelled against God. You got Gabriel, you got Michael, you got Lucifer. Lucifer, the archangel of God, took a third of the rebellious angels, and he did the wrong thing. Amen. Are you all with me all right? Well, I don't know about you, but that leaves two-thirds that's on our side. You know, I'm, I'm not the sharpest drawer, knife in the drawer, but I believe we're going to win. Ain't that right? I mean, God's got angels that can do exceedingly abundantly above. How's God going to pull that off? My God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond all you could think or ask. 
by the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Turn, uh, Brother Dale, to 2 Kings chapter 19. How's God going to do this? 2 Kings chapter 19, verse 35 and 36. If you can put them both up there, it'd be good. Here, the, the, you could say in a sense, here our family before us, the children of Israel, were having a problem, and this city was besieged, and it didn't it, it look good for, the, for God's people. But God spoke up and said, uh, And it shall come to pass that night that the angel of the Lord went down and smote in the camp of the Assyrians a hundred and Four score and five. Now, I don't know about you, but four score, a score is 20, and four times 20 is 80. He smote 180. What did it say? And the angel, it didn't say the, all the angels. We don't know how many it took, but, you know, it just said the angel of the Lord, like there's one. He took care of 185,000 one night. When they got up the next morning, all they found was corpse everywhere. I don't know about you, but I want to respect somebody like that. Huh? I want to have reverence to somebody like that. I want to fear reverence, have a holy awe for somebody like that. How's God going to take care of us and the enemy not get us? Put your trust in the Lord. Trust ye in his holy angels. He's got a Ways and Means Committee that's supernatural, way beyond what you could ever comprehend with your natural brain. Amen? And, and it's not about just a lost ring. It's not about a few articles. When it's all said and done, Michael is a warring angel. Warring angel. In other words, he trained. He's a big dude. <laughs> he knows how to take care of business. So let's reverence him. Let's honor God. Let's trust God. Let's live for God. Let's not be afraid to go tell somebody about Jesus. Do you know what those unbelievers need? They need to become believers. They need to hear about the Lord Jesus Christ. All that's wrong with that whole mess over there is they just brought up the wrong way. You better thank God for your upbringing. Amen. Huh? You can thank God that you was born here in the United States of America where you have an opportunity. Most homes got four or five Bibles whether you use them or not. Amen. There's people that have traveled for days just to get an opportunity maybe to get a little testament. Yes, sir. Just an opportunity to get a little testament. How blessed we are. Yes, Amen. Amen. God is on our side. The blood's been applied. We will not be denied. For every promise of God is what? Yes, yes and amen. God is for us, not against us. I am who he says I am. Did you notice how me and Amy were dressed just alike this morning? <laughs> Twins. <laughs> God's for us, isn't he? Amen. Not against us. I am who he says I am. I have what he says I have. I can do what he says I can do. God cannot lie, Amen. and he will not fail. Simple, isn't it? I want to encourage you to stay strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Amen. Ephesians 6 and 10. Be strong in the Lord. Now, I don't care if you go work out like Thallus. That's fine. But find your real strength in the Lord Jesus Christ because that's where it's at. Amen. Amen. Reverence God. Respect God. Be respectful to people. Teach your children to be respectful. Expect God to do the supernatural because that's what he do. He's a supernatural God. And he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond all that you could ask or think by that power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Angels unaware. Let me find that scripture. That's Hebrews 13. Let's put that in up there and then we're going to go baptize some people. Glory to God. I love baptizing. That means something good's happened. Is that right? Something good. Now, 
here, here it has to do with respect to, to me, because when you truly love God, you're going to love the creatures of God, the creations of God. Matter of fact, Jesus said, or the, he, the Spirit of God said, how can you say you love God when you don't love man made in the image of God? In other words, he's saying you lied about that. Matter of fact, when the Spirit of God comes on us and gets in us just right, we're going to love everybody. Hmm? We love our enemies. We do good to people that do bad to us. You say, well, you know, we've done that with that bunch over there in uh, that other country. We give them billions of dollars a year to make weapons to try to kill us. Yeah. But that's something. We feed them. I tell you, when it's all said and done, love's going to win. Don't you think it's not? It may not win every one of them, but I guarantee you there's people over there in those countries that's hearing about Jesus. There's people over there that are turning towards Jesus Christ. And I, I thank God for it. We can't stop loving people. We've got to keep on loving. Love. Love is the greatest force you've ever come in contact with. Love will get a sick mom up out of bed in the middle of the night to feed her baby. It'll get a daddy up out of the bed that don't feel like going to work. He'll go to work and work hard for his money. Love will do that. Nothing else will do it. Love is a motivator. What does it say here? Let brotherly love continue. Oh, how we need to love one another. Listen to what he says, and I believe this sets the table for it. When we let, it didn't say it this way, but I believe this is the way it is. When we let brotherly love continue, we are not forgetting to entertain strangers. And angels unaware if you'll love people do good deeds for people cheryl's bringing clothes in here and packing them up and down them steps and going on to help people homeless people needy people i believe she's got angels to help her don't you i really do they'll protect her you say you believe in guardian angels well I don't know as everybody that's born gets a guardian angel, but I believe our angels do guard for us. I can't say it makes a pretty movie, you know, if you want to watch a good movie about, you know, what's that, uh, uh, that guy that threw himself over in the, in the river and didn't drown, an angel. Yeah. It's, it's, a wonderful it's a wonderful life. It makes a pretty movie, but I can't guarantee it's exactly that way. But I believe there are angels that work for us and help us. I do. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. Many, many, many good songs have been written about this. One, one of them is Blessed Assurance. There's a, there's a verse in there about angels and Blessed Assurance. Amen. A lot of good things going on in church. Let's pray this prayer together. Heavenly Father, give me eyes that I can see better what all you're doing for me. I command blindness to come off of me and be gone in Jesus' name. Amen. God will give you eyes to see. That's one of the prayers that Paul taught us how to pray, that the Spirit of the living God give us eyes to see. If you're here today and you've received the Lord Jesus Christ and you want to be baptized in water, would you make your way over here to this corner and Miss Marilyn and Sammy will tell you exactly what you need to do. If you're here to be baptized today, you've come and you're ready to be baptized, just make your way over here to this corner. And that's your cue if you're in the song thing, Miss Cheryl wants to practice with the little ones. This is about the only opportunity they'll have. You better hurry up, Cheryl, because it ain't going to take me long to be ready to baptize, I'll tell you that. You're going to have to do one of them lightning fast things. If you're here and you're part of the singing of the, uh, her singing group, then go to the nursery, and she wants to practice a song with you right quick. What? Oh, there with Rob downstairs, Cheryl. I don't know. That's going to have to be a quick work. 
Uh, matter of fact, Rob may want to bring them up for this baptizing too. And there might be one down there being baptized that wants to be baptized. Would you check that out? Is there one down there? Okay. Okay, good. Good, 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 good. So we, we're going to try not to make it a super long service. We had about an hour and a half more preaching. And I had several people to encourage me that I got two hours to preach today because fasting and, and, and Terry Smith brought a snack with him just in case. <laughs> we well, got donuts or what? Okay. What? I did remind him. Again? Yeah. Where was you? Sleeping? <laughs> I started the service out about Tuesday being election day. Telling everybody to vote. I wish you'd have woke her up, Lenny. Hey, Chrissy wants you to vote too, so you can vote twice. <laughs> if you don't know how to vote, she's probably going to tell you how before she sits down. I told you she's probably going to tell you. I'm not allowed to say nothing like that to the pulpit under law. But I tell you this, go vote. Let the Spirit of God lead you. Hallelujah. The Lord is good and His mercy endureth forever. Hallelujah. Amen. If you have a family, yes, sir. Get a flat screwdriver out of the, and there's a little place there you insert in that round thing. Flat screwdriver. Hey. There's, there's a screwdriver in the workroom in the drawer. Hallelujah. For the Lord is good, and His mercy endureth forever. Woo! These are happy times, church. Happy, 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 happy. Amen? Praise God. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Who's my first contestant, Sammy? Glory to God. Yeah, if you're a family member, just come on up here closer so you can see I have them. Right here is where they're going to sit. Uh, we need somebody. You going to do it, Linda? Take pictures? Our camera woman's not here today. So Linda has been volunteered. Yeah. Yes. Yes. All right. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. I uh, don't know. Mike, I'll keep it right here. So there's a testimony of angels that worked for them. Amen. And they do a lot of things. We, we, we just don't recognize it, but all of us have been through situations where we look back and said, how in the world did I, how did that keep from killing me? God has sent ministering spirits. Oh, to what now? That's right. Come on down, brother. I got no handlebars, but you come around, sit right there, and look at this beautiful woman right here. Already? Mr. Rocky Bailey, right? Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Y'all uh, have been to the movie Rocky? <laughs> <laughs> I went up them steps a few years ago. Where he ran up them steps in Philadelphia? Oh, really? I got to do that, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. 
They had to give me oxygen about halfway up. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Rocky, have you received the Lord Jesus Christ in your spirit? Yes, sir. So you're here today to be baptized to follow Jesus and what he taught us to do. Yes, I am. Amen. Well, Jesus himself couldn't be here today, but he's got field agents all around the world, like myself, that stand in the name of Jesus. And when we baptize you, it's just as if he baptized you himself. Amen. Amen. You receive that? I do. Amen. The Bible says everything you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So this is what the Spirit of God taught me to do about water baptism. Baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. The only authority I have to baptize is in Jesus' name. So I stand, Rocky, in Jesus' name. Put your hands right on mine. Hold on to me. I stand in Jesus' name and I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for this young man. I thank you, Lord, for such a time as this. You brought him into the kingdom of God, and I'm expectant of you to use him for your service, for you to be glorified in him and his wife and family, and for the kingdom to come and your will to be done in him for your glory and Rocky and his wife and family's good in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 You can just stand right there on that top step and let about five gallons of that run out of them birches. Yeah. <laughs> It's filling back up, brother. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Woo! The old devil thought he had you, but another one bites the dust. <laughs> Glory to God. Woo! Thankful. Thankful for the things of God. Thankful. Glory to God. I got a heater on in that room in there to kind of keep it chill off of you. Water's good and warm. I mean, you can take a bath in that. I've took plenty of baths and a lot cooler than that. <laughs> Praise God. Who we got? No, I don't know him. Ry How you pronounce that? Riley. Riley? Okay. Just like, uh, just like it's spelled. Riley. Come on down, Riley. You might want to hold my hand because that's slick. Believe it or not, I had one to come right down through their feet first. Sit right there and look at this wonderful lady. Riley, have you received the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Ask him to come into your heart, and you know he did. So you're here today to follow Jesus in water baptism. Put your hands right on the back of my both of them, and just hold on. Riley, in Jesus' name, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, well, I want to be baptized in, in a river. This water came out of a river. We cleaned it up, got the tadpoles out of it, and here it is, ready for service. Now, don't let that trick you. Water's water. Amen. If it makes that much difference, whether it's river water or creek water, you need to go all the way back to Israel and be baptized in the Jordan. Amen. But you don't have to do that. You're baptized. This is being buried in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, following Jesus, being buried into Christ, raised to walk in the newness of life like the Spirit of God says to. 
Levi. Levi. It's like Levi, but it's Levi. Come on, Levi. Praise the Lord. Built for speed, he says. I'm surprised you didn't do a belly flop right down in there. <laughs> That's good. You've been raised right, ain't you? <laughs> That's good. So, Levi, have you received the Lord Jesus Christ to be your personal Savior? Come, he asked you to come into your heart, and he did. Praise the Lord. Then I want to baptize you. You just have, hold on to my hand right there with both hands, both of them, because I don't want you to slip. Father, in Jesus' name, I baptize Levi in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Glory be to God. <laughs> amen. You stand right there on that top step just a minute. I could get used to this. Amen. Hey, one, uh, one time, I think we had 17. Uh, we had a vacation Bible school, had 19 to get saved. We baptized 17 out of the 19. Two of them went to their own church and was baptized. Uh, you know, God's able to do things, church. And if we'll, we'll get busy and just invite people, just, just get them here. Get children here. Get, get them under the word and let them hear the word of God. The spirit of God will draw them and they'll get born again and uh, we'll just, it'll just be good. I'm just telling you. Amen. Amen. Come on down, sweetheart. Angels in heaven are praising God. Ma'am? Oh, yeah, Midge, of course, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Miss Midge was uh, a great friend of Miss Johnson's and ours, and she went to Bible school in Tulsa, where we went to Bible school, and uh, she's just a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful lady, and I'm sure she's, she's having a good time over this situation. Paisley? Have you received the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Ask him to come into your heart, and you know he did? Amen. Well, you put your hands right on the back of my hand. And hold on, both hands. Paisley, in Jesus' name, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Praise God, Paisley. Live for Jesus every day of your life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Have we got any more, Sammy? Yeah, we got some. All right. That's good. I know one uh, 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 little girl, Laura. No. It's uh, Kelly Nicole's daughter. Olivia, she's unable to be here today. Timber. Come on, Timber. Hallelujah. All right, sweetheart. Sit down right there and look at this lovely lady right here. Look at her. Timber, have you received the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart by faith? Good. Well, I'm not Jesus, but I'm here to represent him and to baptize you. You always remember this day. You put your hand right on the back of mine right there. Just hold on, both hands. Timber, in Jesus' name, whoops, about, about dropped the thing. In Jesus' name, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, Timber. You can stand on that top step right there if you would, just a minute, let some of the water run out of you. We may have to run some more water here, Justin. Right there, right there. That's right, right there. That's good. What about it, Sammy? That's it? Anybody else? Water's fine. Praise the Lord. Can somebody shout unto the, unto the Lord for his victory today? Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Glory. Yeah. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you for bringing your children to Emmanuel Ministry Church. Thank you for teaching them the things of God and giving God an opportunity. God loves everybody. God does not desire that any go to a devil's hell. But God is the God of his word, and he said you must be born again. So it, it's not just that God's just going to let everybody. There's a universal salvation being taught out there, that God just ain't going to let 
anybody go to hell? Why would Jesus talk so much about hell if, he, if it ain't there? Jesus really talked more about hell than he did heaven. Hell's a real place, and it's torment. And you don't want to go there, nor do your people want to go there. So we must train them, bring them up to know the Lord Jesus Christ and keep them in Christ, not to just come to know him, but keep them in him and let them work and, and acknowledge him and live for him all the days of their life. Thank you, Denny. Hallelujah.